All right. <laughs> All right. Who would have thought the most vulgar thing about this movie was Andy Dick's I'm, name? It I'm, just felt so aggressive when they said it in the trailer. Andy Dick. And Andy Dick. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Go on right away. All right. This fucking movie. Yeah. Oh God. Hashtag this fucking movie. Hashtag this fucking movie. <laughs> Welcome into that movie show. Hi everybody. Where we're gonna talk about this fucking movie. Yes, that movie show, and we are talking about the Hebrew Hammer. Mike went. Liam Stryker. Bill oh. Neville was on assignment tonight, so yeah, the uh, the adults are away, and we will play. And yeah. we are definitely playing with the... Uh, it's just in time for Hanukkah, though. Just in time for Hanukkah. Hanukkah starts on December 2nd this year, yep. which is when uh, this episode is dropping on New Age Insiders Pop on yes. all your favorite podcasting apps. And uh, yeah, I couldn't... When I was thinking about it, when we were going through what we're going to do for the, the holiday season, uh, what what would make for a good Hanukkah movie? Yeah. And this, I mean, for me, this, this is the first thing that popped to mind. Um, I thought of Eight Crazy Nights, uh -huh. the animated Adam Sandler feature, which mm -hmm. I had seen and was okay. And in hindsight, should have probably fought for it a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yes, we this are- This is also our second mm. black exploitation satire-ish movie. Ish. And funny, funnily enough, uh, this, this movie also- has a crowdfund campaign for the sequel. Oh my god! Uh, I uh, doing my research. I found out that uh, the director Jonathan Kessel Kesselman and Adam Goldberg have set up for about a year now a crowdfunding campaign for the Hebrew Hammer versus Hitler. Can we start a counter GoFundMe to have them not make the movie? No, because I want to get Adam Goldberg on the show. This is the second Adam Goldberg movie. He was in Dazed and Confused oh, that we've done. And I really liked that movie. <laughs> Come on. I, I really liked that Lighten movie. up. Oh, Light, no. Lighten no, up, no, no. Francis. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, in the research that I did with this movie, yes. I side with, uh, what were they? The Anti-Defamation League. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I side with That'll be the first and only time on this show I think you side with them. Uh, it will be. It will be the first and only <laughs> time holy moly so let me get the business out of the way yeah, before so we can get into this yeah let's do this uh the hebrew hammer was uh released it was it was a comedy central made for comedy central yes. movie uh so it was on tv december <laughs> 8th 2003 had a budget of 1.3 million dollars they put it in the theaters for a week just for you know award possibilities it made eighty two thousand dollars uh let's see da, 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 da. jonathan kesselman wrote and directed the movie it stars Adam Goldberg, Judy Greer, Andy Dick, Mario Van Peebles, and uh, a bunch of others. There's a cameo by his dad, Melvin Van Peebles, yeah. who is actually credited as Sweetback, which I absolutely love the reference. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen Sweet Sweetback's badass song, because oh, no. that's a wonderful black exploitation movie, almost like the the Godfather of black exploitation movies, okay. if you will. Okay, I got on Blu-ray, which part? Yeah, maybe we should do that too. That too, it's because it probably would have been better than this movie. Oh my God, <laughs> we we are in for it. Well, that's the business. So let's just jump right into the Hebrew Hammer. Okay. First things first. All right. First thing is first. This movie I avoided back when it was out as a Comedy Central movie in 2003. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing the trailer and being like, this looks terrible. <laughs> and now- The trailer we just played. The trailer we just played. I was like, this movie looks bad. Okay. Then I started watching it. Last night. Last night. For the first time. Yeah, for the it, first time. By the way, time. it's on Amazon Prime for it is. free. And Hulu. And Hulu. So you, you confirm that. I can confirm that. Okay. And so uh start watching it. Yeah. And the the kids are making fun of little Jewish Hebrew hammer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like Mordecai oh. Jefferson Carter. Yeah. I was Carver. like, oh, this could be a little fun. Okay. This I can get into this. Maybe, maybe I was wrong about this movie. Mm -hmm. And then that one girl comes in super hot. Oh yeah, and is just like you're an evil Jew, and I was just like, oh my god, and I'm okay Mommy with says, that. Mommy says you're all gonna burn in hell for killing Jesus, right? Which is really funny because she even offended the Catholics. Yeah, right. They all looked <laughs> at her like, whoa, like whoa. Susan. Put Jesus. the guns. This is this. You see, this is the thing. You, you, you're taking a little too hot. We're breaking balls here, and you come in with the cutting of balls off. It's, it's yeah, not cool. It's, yeah, oh, very, Susan, very easy. Christian of you though. <laughs> 
very Christian of you. Uh, so then, you know, he grows up and, and he's doing the, like the shaft walk very much. And I'm in, I'm still, they in. remade the shaft song for this. Right. I'm certified in. circumcised dick. And then, and then he like helps the little boy that's yeah. getting picked on. And you know, I'm like, Oh, I, I, I think I was wrong about this movie. Mm -hmm. And then everybody became the most stereotypical Jewish person ever right and i was like oh this is too much oy vey this is too much <laughs> oy vey this is too much this is too much and this is coming from a gentleman who went to a, a grew up in a very very jewish town sure uh and so i was looking at this i was like wow this is a bunch of stereotypes sure this is nonsensical. Yeah, but in the theme of the movie, I mean, they were doing a Jew exploitation movie, like the black exploitation yeah. movies, which the black exploitation movies, we watched Black Dynamite, and it was all the stereotypical black stuff. Right. So this would be in line with that type of filmmaking where it's like, yeah, we have to do this to stick with the theming of the movie. You are, while you are correct in the. I'm going to win this one. You, while you are. You pissed off some people when you said The Hangover was better than Planes, Trains, and Automobiles last week, oh, which yeah. is in the archives on newageinsiders.com. <laughs> so I'm going to win this one back. Yeah. Uh, and I, but the thing is, is that they're mad because I was right. No, I don't think so. <laughs> they were mad because I was right. And I'm going to be right about this, too. While in. They're like, I, if I wanted Cinema Sins, I'd go to Cinema Sins, <laughs> goddammit. In ideology. You're right. Yes. The uh, but in practicality, mm -hmm. this it just is borderline offensive. Yeah, but so are the black exploitation movies. Right. But name another Jew exploitation movie. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we could have we could have taken like. That's why it was so much fun. We could have taken like thirty percent off of it. Ah, I don't know. You gotta go. You gotta go big or go home. God. All or nothing. See, first I, or last. I would have preferred. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I would have rather have watched Talladega Nights. We'll get to it once the holidays are over. We just talked about that off yeah. air. <laughs> um, because, get ready because it's gonna be Will Ferrell, gen January or February. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Fuck Valentine's Day. I'm not doing one. Yeah, like. It would have been, we just needed to take like uh -huh. maybe 30% off of the Jewish ac Jewish accents. Okay. Like in general. Like if we just took like 30% off, we would have been fine. See, then then you're, you're compromising, man. You're conforming, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And maybe the the conformity would have made it a better movie. Uh, no, see, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I don't think so. Yeah, because because I think my biggest problem with this movie was Andy Dick. Andy Dick is terrible. He, like that's my that was, and I enjoyed this movie for what it was. Oh God, I'm not sitting here saying yes, this is a great representation of a Hanukkah movie. Yes, this is a great piece of cinema. I'm saying, <laughs> look, I watched it in 2003 when it hit Comedy Central, and actually rented the DVD through Netflix. Okay, because that's back when that was happening. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> the subscription was two DVDs. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. And and, uh, and I watched it again, and I'm like, I I like it for what it is. But I also, admittedly, and as you've seen in the show like the shittier side of movies yeah we've often disagreed when i when i suggest a shitty movie in my opinion that i'm like ah this is just fun for what it is <laughs> yeah it's not like you know wonderful afi cinema oh yeah it's just gonna be fun 90 minutes right that's what i got of it but, but if i had to nitpick yeah andy dick andy dick was andy dick was terrible andy oh, yeah he, he was, but he's also andy dick right like i'm just not a fan yeah i i think i'm not a fan of him or his brand of humor right he he definitely he definitely just takes the movie down a notch and is grading right um you know i feel like i feel like this is well, our thought process is the opposite mm -hmm. of battlefield earth where Go on. I enjoyed Battlefield Earth. Oh, yeah, okay, so, I, so I see what you're saying. And I enjoyed it for what it is, and you hated it. I hated it. And that's how I feel about this movie. It was, it was, it was painful. This is my one. Battlefield Earth. Re wow. This is my... The so Hebrew far. Hammer is Liam's Battlefield Earth. Like, it's just... It was bad. Amazing. Uh, the... <laughs> yeah. Looking... I watched another movie 
that uh, this uh, this past couple of days. Okay. I watched Creed, the original Creed. Wonderful movie. I had never seen it before, mm -hmm. and I loved it. Wonderful movie. It was a story about a man overcoming not only the shadow of his father, but sure. his own personal demons right. of in and insecurities. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a very, very well-made boxing movie. There was a sequence in which there was a one take for the entire fight, mm -hmm. which was awesome. You got to go uh, go to Stallone's Instagram and watch the outtakes where Michael B. Jordan actually gets knocked out in that one take. I, gets back up and is like, all right, let's do it again. I am going to have to... Like uh, snoring. <laughs> out <laughs> let's do it like that mma fight we exactly. just started watching uh before we came down here we were watching bellator mma and i think it was the main event i don't know might not have been maybe don't, don't follow mma all nope. that much but they were like all right and but it we're, was six seconds long and we're gonna do this and this six seconds in dude gets knocked out then this is the fight we've been waiting for all <laughs> He's out. <laughs> then the guy that got knocked just out got here. up and just starts arguing with the ref, trying to be like, no, I didn't get knocked out. I didn't get knocked out at all. Both of those were better movies than the, the Hebrew Hammer. The arena's empty. That was 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those were better than the Hebrew Hammer. Oh, come on now. Uh, well, Creed was better. Yes. Yeah. Come on. That, that's apples and cantaloupes. <laughs> <laughs> it's apples and a good movie. That's what it was. It was apples and a good movie. Right. But when, but when you're looking at a movie like The Hebrew Hammer, you can't compare it to a movie like Creed. No, but I compare it to a movie like Black Dynamite, and that is a cinematic masterpiece. All right. <laughs> Let's calm the fuck down here. All right. <laughs> the Jewish atomic clock? Yes. Filled with, what was it? Uh, what was the What was the substance? It was something. It was something. I think Judaism. No, it was something even stupider. <laughs> Stu it was something even stupider. They uh -huh. were going to. Oh, God, what is it? I gotta, they have to go to Israel to a Kmart? Was that it? They, no. They were, no, they were in a Kmart because that's where Santa was appearing. Yeah. With, with his two goons with the velvet rope letting only the little girls in. Right. That was oh. a little weird. In the scantily clad Santa well, outfit. Watch, it, it was just it was weird, that, it, that scene, because they, they did. there was a, a boy, right. a young boy waiting in line to see Santa. And then they call this little girl, equally of age, about six yeah. to eight years old. And, he's, and these two big Sopranos extras are sitting there and like, all right, honey, spin it around. Let me see the back say you go. Powerpuff girls. That's adorable. I like that. Yeah. Go ahead in honey. Yeah. It's like, well, oh, no. And well, <laughs> and at what we know at the time about Christianity mm -hmm. and the Catholic faith, they touch children. Well, boys, boys. So, yeah. you know, they were, they were trying to, you know, get away from that. Yeah. A little bit <laughs> different child molestation. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, and then led to a very, very, like this felt like one of the later national lampoon movies. Okay. Um, not, you know, Christmas vacation, regular vacation, <laughs> animal house. Sure. Uh, but more like the hottie and the naughty. I don't remember that one. Yeah. It's, it stars Paris Hilton. Oh God. It's bad. Oh God. Right. That's um. Th it feels like one of those later National Lampoon movies. Not Van Wilder, but Van Wilder Two: The Rise of Taj, like that type. That's what this movie felt like. Okay. Um, and I didn't see it. Yeah. Again, it, <laughs> save yourself. Yeah. Because <laughs> save yourself. I do know you my know, limitations. You know, not here, here, here's my limitations. When a sequel to a National Lampoon's movie comes out, and National Lampoon's removes their name from the sequel. Yeah. If you look. Vegas Vacation? Not National Lampoon's Vegas Vacation, just Vegas Vacation. Yeah. Look it up, kids. Yeah. Ooh, Christ. The Rise of Taj? Just the Rise of Taj. Not National Lampoon's The Rise, Rise of, of Taj. Taj. No. Yeah, right. And so you look at it, and it's more like one of those movies. It's like those alternate universe American Pie movies. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Those. Yeah, I was just about to think that. The ones like, they don't reference in the actual four movies. Yeah, not any of the uh, American Pies, but the like American Pie band camp. It's American Pie, let's get Eugene Levy another paycheck. Yeah, which is weird. Plain why? And simple. It's weird that they why, picked him. Why would you him. say no? No, no, no. I understand why you he... You know why they picked him? Because he said yes! Yeah, right. Every... The rest of them had jobs. <laughs> yeah, the, yes, that is exactly what it is. I mean, how long does it take for them to make Shit's Creek? <laughs> Not long. Yeah. That's his TV show with his kid and uh, Catherine O'Hara. Oh, okay. Gun Pop. 
Oh, oh, with um, Impact? <laughs> well, who knows for how long? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? It's actually a funny show. I bet. Yeah. I bet it is. Yeah. Uh, so you look at this movie, and they're like, they're, they have the Harriet Tubman reference mm-hmm. in the Kmart. Sure. You know what? Here's the thing. we got to start from the beginning. Yeah, we're we in do. The, we're in the, like, the beginning we're, of this We're movie. in the middle somewhere. Yeah, we're in the middle of this movie somewhere. Sammy Davis Jr. Jr., always a funny joke. <laughs> yeah. How? How is that even topical in 2003? Because it's always a funny joke. It's Sammy- Because they had, a, they had a guy that could do Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, kind of. Kind of. A guy that could have potentially sort of been Sammy Davis Jr.'s yeah. son. He gets hired for weddings. Yeah, sure. Of course he does. You know who was a good... We got Austin Powers and Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> over here. Look at this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You've so, been to one of those weddings. You know you have. We all have. <laughs> Everybody Where they has. hire the bootleg fucking impersonators. <laughs> to be the singers. <laughs> I'm uh, officiating two weddings. On purpose? Yeah, on purpose. Oh, okay. Yeah, two members of the Yenny Aberhood. Oh, oh, all right. There yeah. you go. Yeah, they both asked me. It's going to be really Interesting. fun. It's going to be really fun. I got I to gotta write a speech and everything. You got a speech? Yeah, I got to like be the... I'm con- officiating, so I got to like talk about love and stuff. Do you? Yeah, maybe. Don't you have to like, you know, uh, do you, do you? <laughs> I mean, cool, the bar is that way. Uh, I mean, do I also uh, potentially just show up and do the Princess Bride? Maybe. Oh, why not? Wav. Well, it depends. True, on, wav. It depends on how much they're paying you. Yeah. To, to be honest, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you make an effort and do an original piece, or, or we're just copy and pasting the original bride. Or, or if I, I mean, I, if Deadpool's gonna do it, you might as well do it. Or if I do, uh, the one from Spaceballs. Oh, yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah. 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 Do you? <laughs> do you? Do you? All right, we're done. We're done. <laughs> the Hebrew Hammer. The Hebrew Hammer. Back to the Hebrew Hammer. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a very detour type of thing. Let's keep an eye on the Yeah, because the movie <laughs> sucked. No, it didn't. Oh, God, it was awful. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we grow up in the world. Santa, as played by uh, Andy Dick, is mm-hmm. not Santa Claus yet. It's his son, Damien. It's his son, Damien. And Santa Claus is talking about how great being Santa is. And how, like, his dad was terrible, and he's decided to not be terrible. Right. And so then Damien, Andy Dick there, has the reindeer kill Santa Claus so that he can become Santa Claus. Oh. Um, I do like that there's a little lore building here. Sure. Uh, I do think that it was... We're building the uh, Hebrew Hammer expanded universe. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Um, the question I would have is... is it's going to be a 10-part Netflix series just on the reindeers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of, like, the renegade reindeers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, A2 Blitzen. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, God. No. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Uh, the elves are all sitting around in a business board meeting. Yeah. But now Andy Dick, for really no reason, mm-hmm. just because he's Andy Dick, sure. wants to end Hanukkah. Well, yeah. I don't... Okay. I mean, I mean, if if you're taking over half the holiday, yeah, why not get your whole piece of the holiday? See, but I feel like Hanukkah. So she's your evil Santa. I know, but even I, the motivation for it just doesn't make sense. All right. Because I've always felt that well, he was a dick, even in the meeting. He was a dick, even in the meeting. You know, he was sitting there with his bottle of Smirnoff and uh, just kind of bullshitting on his on his dad. Who's right. just trying to be good Santa. Yeah. Well, it's just Jolly like, old Saint Nick, and he's just like, yeah, you know what? Fuck this. Okay. Maybe I wanted this movie to be better. Blitzen will get you fixed if you cut him. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, why do you hate Hanukkah so much? Mm. Why do you hate Judaism so much? If you're Santa, yeah. what is your stake in this game? World domination. <laughs> <laughs> To what end? <laughs> it's it's basically the same plot of Hudson Hawk, which we've covered in the archives, newagentsires.com. Oh, that was a gem. <laughs> see, this is see, this is where we're I think we we have to part the war- roads here. I think you take these movies I suggest too seriously. I no, because Because you've come into a lot of them with the same thing. I wanted it to be better. Did you? <laughs> because I could have told you it's not. <laughs> yeah. But by by better, I mean I don't know, watchable. Maybe, it's completely watchable. Maybe maybe what I need for some of these movies yeah. is like a drink rating. So Actually, it would help if you drank during the movies. That's how I get through them. Yeah, see, <laughs> see that's the thing. If I knew that I had to have Jameson with me sure. to, to watch, or Manischewitz, why Black not? Black Label, please. Yeah, Black <laughs> Label Manischewitz. You know, maybe I would. Maybe I would have enjoyed this more. Probably. Maybe if I got high off my balls. Sure. You know, I would have enjoyed the Hebrew hammer more. It couldn't hurt. Because that's what's going to happen when we finally do mm-hmm. Kung Pao 
Enter the Fist. I can't believe that keeps getting tweeted at us. Uh, because that movie is... If if we can do the Hebrew Hammer, we can definitely do the <laughs> Kung Pao Enter the what Fist. Fa- what holiday is that fall on? Uh, Kung Fu a day. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, yeah. So Santa Claus takes over. He's going to kill Hanukkah. Is right. what he's decided. So the Jewish Justice League. Yep, that's a thing. Is going to uh, is going to show up. Sure. And uh, help the and help save the day. Mm-hmm. So so Hebrew Nick Fury is up there banging gavels and telling. <laughs> Let me get this guy's name because it's a gem. Yeah, of course it is. It's uh, it, it's Judy Greer's dad in this one. Yeah. Uh, she's Esther, and he is. He doesn't even have a first name. It's just J J L Chief, and oh, their last name is a gem. <laughs> Oh, one more time. Blumenbergen Steenenthal. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Crushed it. Crushed it. Woo! Esther Blumenbergen Steenenthal. Thal. Thal. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't get it. No uh, points this round. No points for me. Moving on. Uh, yeah, but you... So he's just... They're trying to figure out who they're going to send. Uh, I did get a chuckle out of when they were like... Oh, you know who we should send? Let's send Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, that's pretty funny. Like, that's gonna. Well, well, fun fact: uh, Peter Peter Cody, who was actually playing JJL Chief uh, Blumenberg and Steenenthal, was in ET. Oh, fun. So that made that joke even more a little inside. Oh, cool! Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And so it was. He a made little... ET. How tough of a Jew could he be? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that makes that joke funnier. There you go. See, it's, it's funny. I didn't find any redeeming qualities in Battlefield Earth. Uh. Yeah. See that we're pulling redeeming yeah, qualities okay. out of your All subconscious. Right. <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe we'll get there. I doubt it, but maybe we'll get there. Okay. Uh, so then, basically, they have uh, they have Judy Greer as Esther go Blumenberg and Steenenthal, right, to go to the Hebrew Hammer to make to get him to do it. Mm-hmm. But there was something with uh, some other figure that they were supposed to. He like was supposed to pick somebody up at an airport or something. Okay. For the Jewish Justice League, and so he's on the outs. Yeah. And this is their last resort: is the Hebrew hammer. Well, you, well, you get the impression that yeah, he went rogue. Yeah, he went. And, and now he's got his own private uh, detective agency where he's a certified circumcised dick. Yeah. But he only handles Jewish problems. Yeah. Because uh, as we find out later. Yes. As we find out later with the, the very well done black and white piece. Yeah. Where you think it's a voiceover. No, he's just listening to his own audio sex tape. Yeah. Which is so, <laughs> which is so like, again, the the parts that are like not super like heavy handed Jewish mm-hmm. are good. Like we get well, when he goes to the Nazi bar. Yep. Like that's, Wonderful. that's good. Wonderful. But when he, him and his mother at the dinner table. Oh, you, you knew that had to happen. I know, but it's just like, hey, can we turn it down like four notches? I mean, the Chinese guy in the corner was a bit confusing, but. Uh, I don't know why. But. Why? But funny that he couldn't eat until uh, Mordecai had all his food. I just looked at, I looked at the Asian guy when he was just looking confused, and I go, oh my God. That's a representation of the audience. I got you, buddy. That's how I feel. That's how I feel, pal. You don't know what's going on. You don't know why you're here. You're confused as to why this Jewish woman is just accosting her son. And you. And you. (laughs) You you might have been kidnapped from a tour group. Possibly. Blink twice if you're okay. Blink three times if you need help. Has Santa brought in his sweatshop workers yet? No. Because that happens. Sure, sure. Maybe we'll... Actually, no. Tiny Tim... Tiny Tim was wonderful. Tiny Tim was wonderful. Tiny Tim was wonderful, uh, played by Sean Whalen, uh, yeah. who's who's one of those actors. He's he's one of he those is. guys. Uh, I'll, I'll pull his IMDb up real quick. Yeah, Sean Whalen. He but was his good. his changing accent throughout the movie, yeah. was hilarious. And it was funny when Andy Dick called him out on it. What was that? Scockney? Scott? Scottish? Cockney? I don't, I don't, I don't, Cockney? Oh, like uh, lower class British? Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, but it's just yeah. So basically. He's uh, the Hebrew hammer has to go over to his mother's house. Yeah. And while he's in the bathroom, his mother and Judy Greer decide to like have a plot to get him to cooperate. God, this guy has a thousand fucking acting credits. He's he, just that guy. He is just that guy. He is one of those that guys. Yeah. He was he's all he was like a bad guy henchman and something. I I look at his face and I say smarmy. <laughs> 
Smarmy. Yeah, Smarmy. there there is one there's one thing that I'm thinking of. I bet he was in a Friday the thirteenth movie. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. He was probably one of the dickheads that like had Jason resurrected. Maybe. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna think I'm gonna figure out which one I'm thinking of. Like everybody in the late nineties, he did do an episode of Nash Bridges. <laughs> he did an episode of Nash Bridges. <laughs> of course. Uh, oh god. Yeah. And so we'll figure that out. I'll figure that out and I'll... He was at the karaoke party in Cable Guy. Okay. Uh I mean literally I'm just I'm picking and choosing cuz there is a thousand of them. Yeah, of course. Of course there are. Um so he he was a fast food manager in Fer- uh, Ferris I just got there. Ferris Bueller the TV show? His very first acting credit was a 1990 Ferris Bueller TV show as a fast food manager in one episode. First of all, let's let's look at that for a second because that could be just a lost thing like the uh the Clerks TV show which we yeah. have to do the pilot of starring Jim Brewer. Wait, what? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Starring Jim Brewer? Jim Brewer was in played Randall. Of course he did cuz they in, look very similar. In the Clerks TV pilot that never got picked up <laughs> but is available on YouTube and we briefly talked about in our Clerks episode which yeah. is available in the archives newagentsiders.com. Okay. Uh yeah, I mean the first Bueller was a TV show with 13 episodes so we'll have to look into that later. Yeah. Was okay. You know what? I it's got a, it's I a got thing. I have a lot of questions and we're going to skip it cuz we're on the Hebrew it's hammer. It's a thing. Yeah, okay. And uh, maybe it was just shoot me. No, definitely wasn't just shoot me. Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Tiny Tim and Santa Claus, uh, d- their big plot is, at the beginning, mm-hmm. they're going to give all of the young Jewish boys. And girls. And girls. I thought it was just the boys. No, the girls were fighting over it, too. Okay. The It's a Wonderful Life. Bootleg copies uh, yes, boot- of It's a Wonderful Life. Bootleg copies of It's a Wonderful Life. Mm-hmm. Which is very funny. Of course it is. Um, they got poison their brain with it. I don't. It's really funny because I don't even like "It's a Wonderful I'm Life." I'm not a fan either. Um, yeah, it's, I've seen bits and pieces. I think I've maybe watched it a full time once in my life. It, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Exactly. It's a, it's actually kind of a depressing movie. It's so depressing, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, like, while everybody's like ha ha and laughing and cheering, yeah. I don't think anybody understands the like the bleak outcome that is like. Oh yeah, this person still lost that money, right? And right. they're still gonna like foreclose in the house, yeah. the business, and everything. It's not a good movie. Like he he might be happy right now. Not in, not in a Battlefield Earth way. It's just it's not a uplifting no holiday movie. <laughs> yeah, like let's g- gather around the family and watch how bad this family is. Yeah, and they're gonna fall apart, and yeah. everybody's gonna die. We are diverting so much. God, yeah. where's Bill with our ADD problems? I'm telling you, it's because <laughs> it's because this movie's bad. No, it isn't. Yes. Anyway. The same thing with Demolition Man. Oh, God. <laughs> Demolition Man. What a movie. NewAgentSize.com. <laughs> Archives. Um, uh, yeah, so they're going to have It's a Wonderful Life. And yeah. the Hebrew Hammer the Hebrew <laughs> Hammer sees that boy from the beginning yeah. and is going to, uh, like, he just tries to help him out. And the way he helps him out is by uh, giving him a different tape. A different bootleg movie. Yeah. Uh, the Chosen. The Chosen. Because uh, when you need... You need a positive, uplifting Jewish movie. There's only three choices. It's The Chosen, it's The Fiddler on the Roof, or Yentl. Or Yentl. That was and he so had bootleg funny. copies of all three in his trunk. Yeah. And By the way, let's talk about his car for a second. How wonderful was that custom Cadillac? Yeah, the custom Cadillac was fun. I feel like that's a necessity in these type of movies. Uh, you definitely need to have... When he gets to the rental place and he's like, I, I need a Cadillac, prefer lowered, yeah. Yeah, maybe white, white wall, wall tires. tires. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, um, it was also really funny when you think about it. And it's just like, yeah, that's supposed to be in Israel. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's nah. supposed to get that in yeah, Israel. Come on. They and, only had a million bucks. Yeah. They're not, they're not flying to Israel. No, they're no. not actually flying no. to Israel. Come on. Uh, so they're going to... New Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> if that. <laughs> if that. If that. They... So he gets all the young children off of it because watching those children like have their life changed mm-hmm. uh, because of It's a Wonderful Life, and he like one of the kids walks in with a Christmas tree. It's a Hanukkah bush. It's a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> it's like that's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. That's pretty funny. Or or the kid who's just sitting there watching it and he looks at his parents and goes, "Why did you make me Jewish?" Yeah, right. It's like, all right, well done. Well done. See little parts well, of it. Well done. Good job. The uh, the I'm your pusher montage with yeah. Tiny Tim giving him out. Wonderful. I'm glad they used the original song as well. Yep. Most of it we can't refer to. No. 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 <laughs> uh, when he goes to Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa Land. To Kwanzaa Land. Come at the Disney's Hollywood Studios in 2020. Yeah, Kwanzaa Land. Kwanzaa Land. 
Yeah, he goes over to Kwanzaa to like hang out he with. He goes the, over to Kwanzaa. I don't know what it's to a call. Fucking holiday. I don't know what to call those people. The Black Panthers ish. The the Kwanzaa Panthers ish. I don't know. It was weird. They have. Hang a, on. It's the it's the Kwanzaa Liberation Front. Yeah, okay. led by uh, Myro Van Peebles character, which is Muhammad Ali Paula Abdul Rahim. Uh, that name was great, and it tickled me every yep. time that they said it. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Abdul Rahim. Muhammad oh, Ali Paula, Paula Abdul, Abdul Rahim. Rahim. Yep, uh, it was great. That made me that that tickled me every time. But the yeah, the accountant was a little off. It was well, like, it worked. You know, it it it, uh, it developed their relationship very quickly. Yeah, where right. where the accountant's the white guy sitting there, and all of a sudden. They come in and refer to themselves as their racial epithets, and, and he's yeah. like, you can't say that, and you can't say that. He's like, no, we can say it to each other, because that's how we get down. Yeah, right. Cool. Cool. Friends, moving Yay, on. Yay, moving on. Then they find the black elf. The the outcast elf, Jamal, played Jamal. by Tony Cox of yeah. uh, Bad Santa fame. Yep, great. Play, uh, good to know yep. that he's still... Did he... This is before. Yeah, so he yep. probably got the elf job from I'm this. I'm almost positive. I'm about to f- figure it out, but I'm pretty sure this was before. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, what are you going to do? You're looking for a you know, oh, black what, elf? What are you, you going to do? You look for a black elf? Yeah, of course. You need a black elf. This is it. Yeah. It's him. Uh, so, oh, same year. Oh. Okay. Same fucking year. So they just used Wow. The <laughs> Well done, Tony Cox, getting a double paycheck for basically the same role. Yeah, good job. Good job. Good for him. Uh, so he gives a lowdown. But he gives them the wrong address because he's working for Santa. At the moment, yeah. At the moment. And so they send him to a Nazi bar. Yep. Which is the best sequence in the movie. This was a sequence that actually uh, Adam Goldberg has gone on record as saying this is the reason he did the movie. Yeah. This uh, much is... like, uh, so what, what did we do last week? Uh, oh, the... We did Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, yeah. and Steve Martin, when he saw the rental car scene, was yeah. like, I'm doing this movie. This was that scene for him when he read the line, Shabbat Shalom, motherfuckers. He's yeah. like, I'm doing this movie. Yeah. I have to do this. Uh, this is this is the best sequence in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, having him walk in, and the first thing you see is a bunch of skinheads in front of a Nazi flag. Shocking record scratch. Yeah, shocking record scratch. He walks up to the bar, and... Just orders a Manischewitz. Black label. Black label. And the the bartender's response is great. Mm-hmm. He goes, uh, I'm going to give it to you because nobody's had the balls to come up and order a drink <laughs> before, and then we're going to lynch you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that's fun. Drops a fish full of shekels from the motherland. That's the best. That was the best part, is that he goes, I, can I pay for this in shekels? Yep. And it just drops them all because he's just in there. And it, and it's funny. Because he's shaft. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's so good. It's so well done because it's just like, oh, yeah, you're, you're just being a dickhead to these Nazis. Yep. And then pers- immediately knew, he walked in and immediately knew he was in the wrong place. Okay, this guy screwed me over, but you know what? I'm gonna make the most of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna play fucking John Wayne in this bitch. Yeah, and so then I'm assuming murders all of them. All of, well, you see two run away with their yeah, lives, but barely. Barely. Uh, mm. He I liked how he he burned the Jewish star in the front as opposed to burning a cross as yeah, they would do. Right. And that gets us our Melvin Van Peebles cameo. Yeah. As Sweetback with the Sweetback line, which. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, went over everybody's fucking head. The <laughs> yeah. bled your mama, bled your papa, won't bleed you. It's a line from the movie. Don't worry about it. We'll move on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But it. But for those of you that had seen Neat. it, yes, very very clever cameo. Neat. And you know Melvin Van Peebles. Yeah. Wonderful. And so um, uh, I don't know if it's it's said, but uh, you know I thought that scene was a delight. Yeah. There you go. Drink. Drink. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had to get one in because this movie isn't going to get a lot of them. Well, well, I I know that the the drinking game consists of me saying fuck, so you got a few in there. Oh, do I count in this one? I, I don't this know. This fucking movie. <laughs> well, see, that's got to be one. Just that line alone. <laughs> yeah, this fucking movie. This fucking movie. <laughs> but so we continue. No, no, you got, you got. Come on, because uh, we we established in Battlefield Earth, it, it comes from a place of pain. Yeah. So it's <sighs> this fucking movie. This fucking movie. <laughs> but see, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree that this one deserves it. But go on. Yeah. So then our little black elf runs back to the North Pole. Yeah. And he proceeds to tell Santa, like, I get to be an elf now, right? <laughs> and Santa's like, no, not only do you not get to be an elf, but nobody gets to be an right. elf because I'm bringing in Taiwanese slave children. This, this is a sweatshop, and I'm not paying anybody. Yeah. And these Taiwanese sweatshop kids will actually work for peanuts. Yeah. And, and then he, Andy Dick just pelting children with peanuts. Yep. Oh, God. There was, oh, God, there, there was... When they were kind of doing their little 
shuffle into the room, there was a song playing that I can't place right now, but I remember thinking, God damn, that's funny. Yeah. I'll have to go back and watch it again and, and get that reference. I'll tweet it, I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. Hey, well, I, I need somebody to follow me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, Paul, but yes. Yeah, there you go. At Mike went. Um, so yeah, so we get the the sweatshop workers who are pumping out the what the bootleg movies. I yeah. guess. Uh, <laughs> still, yeah. are we still doing that? No, I think. Uh, well, I think technically this was before. Mm. But anyway, mm. that happens. Bootleg movies because mm. he bought the thing. Mm. Uh, did the thing. Did the thing. So now this is where we end up in the Kmart. Yes. Because that's Santa's where Santa's making one appearance this year, kids. It's at a Kmart. <laughs> yeah, right. It's at a Kmart. They're going to go to the Kmart. That's where we talked about that scantily clad Santa prostitutes mm-hmm. that were there for some reason. I guess we know where most of the 1.3 million budget came from. Uh, that Kmart sign was huge. Huge. <laughs> they just kind of lingered on the Kmart sign for about three minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. They were just like, wow, look at that. Kmart. Not a mall, Kmart, because they paid for it. Wow. Yeah, so then they end up going in. (laughs) The Hebrew Hammer and Judy Greer Mm -hmm. decide that they're going to uh, go undercover. As Gentiles. As Gentiles. And that was a lot. (laughs) It was a lot. It was interesting. It was a lot. And they end up sneaking into Santa. They're going to. But again, it was was very... uh... I, I guess not not so much black exploitation, but that was very much Eddie Murphy in every time he did a white guy. Yeah, where he's just hello, sir, and I am here with my white wife. It's yeah, like, you can just say wife. Yeah, you can just say wife, man. You know, hello, you know. gentile, fellow gentile friend. It's like, okay, yeah. okay, all right. It was, it was, it was, it was okay. It was what it was. It was okay. It was what it was. Yeah, it was yeah. what it was. It and was a, it was a thing. So then all the children uh, descend because Andy Dick to get out of getting picked up by the Hebrew hammer Mm -hmm. says that he's going to cancel Christmas. (laughs) And so the kids, maybe the biggest laugh I had is, is right here when, when the, they're running through the Kmart. Yeah. A mob of children, mob of children children are chasing them down. And you hear over the Kmart loudspeaker, attention Kmart shoppers. There are Jews on aisle 12 and the mob of children come (laughs) hauling ass after. I'm like, all right, that's fucking funny. That is pretty funny. That's pretty fucking funny. (laughs) Yeah. But, and then probably the worst sequence in the movie Mm. uh, is right after this where they get locked in a storage closet Mm -hmm. and a mysterious woman takes them and is going to sit them on a sleigh. And oh, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they go. They go on the Christianity ride at Disney World. They go on. <laughs> it's it's a small Jewish world, <laughs> real quick. It really was. And it was like oh, I forget what the woman's name was, mm-hmm. but they the woman had a name, uh-huh. and it was like Tubman and Stein or something. But she was supposed to be Harriet Tubman. That's right. The Underground Jewish Railroad. The Underground Jewish Railroad. That's where we got that segment. And she was. Uh, she was the. Harriet Tubman, yes, but not just whatever the Jewish version was, and the reason why was because Harriet Tubman's nickname was Moses, like the actual one. Okay, and for those of you who have no I idea, I didn't know that. Who have no idea what I'm talking about? Harriet Tubman was a woman that worked uh, with the Underground Railroad to was. take slaves from the South and bring them to freedom in the North, uh-huh. and people called her Moses. Because she was taking the people to freedom, I didn't know. So that that's she was called Moses. so that's what that re that's what that nickname was was for, hmm. and my eyes rolled so far into the back of my head. You're right, Harriet Tubman. Yeah, Harriet Tubman. Yeah, uh, that I had to pick them up, dust them off, and put them back into my skull. Christ, and then proceeded to watch the It's a Small Jewish World. Yep, where it was. It was audio animatronic acting people. Played by real life people. Acting people. Yes. It yeah. was bad. Have you okay, so <laughs> it it's a it's a deep reference, but there was a, a Halloween episode of Saturday Night Live where oh, I forget who the who the rapper was that was a musical guest, but he was also part of it. And they were basically going through a haunted house with animatronics that come to life and kidnap them. Okay. It was it was a delight. I think actually, no, Tom Hanks was in it. Okay. Tom Hanks was in it as well. I it I don't it was a year before the David Pumpkins. Okay. So this was his Halloween thing the year before. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. You don't get um, it. Moving on. It was bad because 
it didn't do anything. Well, we caught him from A to B. Yeah, and then and then we moved on. Yeah. Uh, cause that's where we get the love scene between the two. Yeah. Right after this. And she's going to he talk dirty to me. Dirty talk was very clever. Dirty talk. I will, did enjoy it. You know, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a steady job. Yep. Our <laughs> kids are going to go private school. You started in the trailer. Yeah. You're going to tell me to do what to do. Yep. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yep. Okay. That's funny. And then uh, she lets it slip that she would sleep with him. Uh, she told the mother that she would sleep with him. Yeah. Uh, if mom's she, pimping him out. Yeah, mom's pimping him out, and he gets mad like about it. Like a good it. Jewish mother, mother does. Yeah, like, yeah, which I didn't even realize was a thing, yeah. but apparently it's a thing. Sure. So, uh, basically, they decide to fight, uh, like break up. Yeah, he kind of freaks out. Yeah, he freaks out. They break up. Yeah. I, I did like uh, when after sex, uh, where he's... he's uh, He's tooting some amphetamines, yeah. not, not amphetamines, uh, antihistamines. Antihistamines. And then he plays off the comp- like a very well done display of a coke cokehead planning something out. We just yeah. hop somebody. He's like, "All right, let me do a little role play here. We're gonna do this." Blah, 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 blah. It's just like, I see what you're doing there. Very good. Very fun. You made the antihistamine joke for the Jewish thing. Very funny. But this is the coke scene that I really was enjoying. <laughs> yeah, right, right. This is where we were going with it. Yeah, right. This is where we needed to get to. Antihistamines don't Anti- work high. Antihistamines. <laughs> so basically, they're now on a tootski. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to go to. Uh, is this Israel? Are we there Israel? Yet? Yeah, we got to go to Israel. Yeah, the what, what, what is it? The atomic Jewish, clock. Jewish Jewish atomic clock. Right, which they're going to steal, and I can't find the name of it. Yeah, but they're going to steal Judea. That might have been it. That might have been what it was Judea, called. Yeah, uh, which is a very very rare mineral that powers the Jewish atomic clock. Right, and that's what they're going to do because once they pa- they steal that. And by they, I mean Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Then the Jewish clock will go out of whack. Right. And the Jewish calendar will fall apart and there won't be any more Hanukkah. Exactly. Because they won't know where it goes. Exactly. So um, off to Israel they go. Off to Israel they go. And so they're about to do it. And (laughs) the Hebrew hammer and um, (laughs) Judy Greer, they end up making up. Esther. Esther, yeah. Esther and the the Hebrew hammer, they make up. Well, kind of, because uh, he doesn't want her to come with. He, yeah. He, he goes back to the the uh, the JJL, and he's like, all right, I'll go do it alone. She's staying here. Right. And then he takes off, and the father's like, you got to go. Go with him. Yeah, you got to go. So the whole thing, the whole ride is she's following about 10 inches behind the whole yeah, time. Right. Yeah, right. It is she's it. trailing him. Somehow she got ahead of him. Kind of. She got ahead of him in a car. It was a shootout, and then she comes in and saves him a yeah. little bit, and then that was that quick makeup. Hey, sorry, I got kind of freaked out there. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Right, right, right. Then they have to call in the backup, which, of course, is well, uh, Muhammad Ali Paul Abdul Rahim. I just want to say his name. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but he shows up because the, the Sabbath happens, and the, they get sleepy and fall asleep. Another funny little bit. Yeah. It was and, clever. And so then. Can't wipe their ass, let alone shoot a gun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Andy, goddamn dick. If anybody else was saying that line, I would have loved it. But it's like, oh. Oh, Andy dick. Andy dick. Oh, Andy. I just don't like him. I just don't like Andy Couldn't dick. we have gotten Billy Bob Thornton? I mean, come on. If Tony Cost can make two paychecks. Yeah. Yeah. We should have just made the entire the entire cast. Could have just gone from this from Bad, bad Santa. Santa to this. Yeah. Would have been yeah. great. Uh, so now, um, mm-hmm. I totally forget what happens after this. Well, well, they kidnap. He he saves he the kid- clock, right? But he they saves kidnapped- the clock and they kidnap Judy Greer, right? So he has to go back, and he's like, "Oh, they got my girl, and now I got to uh, go back." Yeah, and, and they got to. They go. do the Batman thing, which was rather funny. Yeah, I love walking up the wall. I love Adam West Batman. <laughs> it's one of my favorite. Yeah, Walk, walking up the walking up the wall, right? <laughs> and so we get the bit. Yep. So ultimate showdown between the Hebrew Hammer yeah. and Andy Dick. Yep. Because that's... they take t- Tiny Tim's uh, Mario Van Peebles takes Tiny Tim's crutch. Yeah, he just very takes, funny. He just takes he it. just takes his crutch, and I loved how so uh, what, like the last couple times Tiny Tim is really upset, but then quickly just kind of gives up. Like yeah. he's sitting there screaming, like, "My crutch, my crutch!" Ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah, right. it's like, and it's almost it's almost getting to the point where it's like, was it just late in shooting? And right. that was actually the actor just being like, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah, right. It's Comedy Central. Know. Come on. It's not yeah. like we're going to actually be put in theaters. Yeah, but they were. <laughs> For a week. $82,000. There you go. $82,000. $82,157 is what yeah. the, the box office was. Oh, it was released on DVD, however, and Netflix and now, sure. now Amazon Prime and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
Sure. I, Surprisingly, I don't actually own it. That is surprising. Yeah. Probably because it was a straight to DVD or a straight to TV movie. No, well, I did rent the DVD at one time. Yeah. Okay. From Netflix. Yeah. yeah. But I'm now glad. it's on Amazon Prime. I'm like, ah, okay. I'll yeah. save five bucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll save sure. Five bucks. But yes. Sure, sure, uh, yeah. Shockingly, the Hebrew Hammer saves the day. Yeah, he saves the day. He saves the day. Saves Hanukkah. Saves Hanukkah, which his, his mother is less than impressed with because it's not even a high holiday. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, we're back at dinner with mom. Yeah. I don't know how long Hanukkah is, but it's... Oh, eight seven, days. Eight, God damn it. <laughs> it's eight I days. knew it as soon as I said it. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know how long... <laughs> I don't know how long Hanukkah is. Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was correcting myself as I was finishing the sentence. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. Damn, you Gentile brain. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, we're back at dinner. That's uh, great. They've, uh, they've, uh, they've, he's proposed. Yeah. So they're going to get married, him and him and Esther. Right. Uh, the Chinese guy's still sitting at the table, still haven't had a bite of food because Mordecai hasn't finished his dinner. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mom is kind of beating on him. I also, the weird, weird uh, D subplot is uh, mom has a sick cat with a diaper that she keeps bringing up to the table and wafting right. its shit in people's faces. On at one point, it it's on her dress. It's just, it, it's it gross. was a weird, I, I, again, I don't know enough about Jewish yeah. culture to know if that's a standard Jewish mom thing. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Tweet me at my Quint. I'm, I'm trying not to be offensive here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Even though I just said I don't know how long Hanukkah is. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crushed that one. Oh, man. Crushed that one. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Line drive right in the pitcher's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Uh, some fun oh. facts about it before we wrap it up. Uh, so let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, there was a few other people besides Adam Goldberg that were options to play the Hebrew Hammer. Yep. Adam Sandler, <laughs> David Schwimmer, okay. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller is the only one I could see. Ben I, Stiller? Because will... I, I see very, uh, what was his character in Dodgeball? Yeah. I see very much of that, like that attitude. Yeah. You know, where. It, see, I think that Ben Stiller would have been a great Santa. I, it would have been a better option than Andy did. I mean, literally. Anyway. A fucking pet rock would have been a better option than Andy Dick. Yeah. Tony Cox would have been a better Santa than Andy yeah. Dick. Do you know who would have been the best? Uh, which one? Santa or Black Santa. Dynamite? Not Black Dynamite. Martin <laughs> Short. Oh, he would have been wonderful. Go ahead and give him a drink. He would have been a delight. <laughs> he would have been a delight. Oh, I love Martin Short. Oh, yeah. He, was, he would have been wonderful. Martin Short would have been a great Santa. A great yeah. evil Santa. Is he Jewish, though? I don't know. I don't, I don't, he's Canadian. Is that? I don't know what that means. Is that count? Santa can't be Canadian, I don't think. Well, I mean, he's closer to Canada, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Because like, there isn't like a North Pole. I figured it'd be like the North of Canada. They are very nice people. Yeah. yeah that, might, that would work. Oh, yeah. That would right. work. He might be too old, though. Well, uh, yeah, he might have been. <laughs> to play Santa's son. Yeah. 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 It's too bad. Yeah. Is that the Hebrew hammer? That's the Hebrew hammer. <laughs> that is <laughs> the, the Hebrew, Hebrew hammer. hammer. Uh, okay, so that's the Hebrew Hammer. Uh, happy Hanukkah to everybody who's uh, listening to this, yeah, happy this Hanukkah. on this week. And uh, coming up next week, we start our run of Christmas movies with possibly the ultimate Christmas movie. The ultimate Christmas movie. Die Hard. Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> die Hard 1. The only true Die Hard. Yes. yes. The only, yeah. The only I'm, one we really need. Yeah, of course. We have many others, as we were talking off air. Uh, the second best Die Hard is, of course, Last Boy Scout. I haven't seen it. Fo followed by Die Hard 2, Die Harder, and Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah. And I don't count those other two weird <laughs> movies he did. It's weird because I guess The Last Boy Scout is supposed to be a Die Hard movie, and Die Hard with a Vengeance is not supposed to be. Let's be honest. They were all supposed to be Lethal Weapon. <laughs> they were all supposed to be. Yeah. Have you ever heard the difference between the book Die Hard and the movie Die Hard? Was it a book or a novelization of the movie? It was a book first. Really? It is. So I will have all of that information Fun. for next week. Fun. Lethal Weapon, another movie that took place on Christmas. But that's going to be a debate for next week. Okay. What counts as a Christmas yeah, movie? Yeah, well, because... Because we got two coming up in the next two weeks. Right. And we had this uh, on the... The show that will be coming back soon, uh, and I'm going to have to talk to you about this. Oh, um, is, this is a surprise to me, folks. Yeah, is uh, the town hall. Oh, I've never been invited to town hall. Yeah, well, we're going to talk There's about- There's actually sanctions against most of it. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna talk about this. We're going to talk about the town hall yeah. after. Um, cool. But yeah. So there's a town hall coming, folks. There's a town hall coming, and 
town hall. We talked about a diehard. Um, being town in the world and a town hall coming. <laughs> There's a town hall, an AI town hall. And a bell. Yeah, we knew we need a town crier. <laughs> <laughs> maybe John Crier too. Or maybe just get Tiny Tim to do it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, and we debated whether or not. Uh, Home Alone or Die Hard was a Christmas movie. All right. And I think that the uh, spoiler, I do think that for the things that people argue against Die Hard for being a Christmas movie are the same reasons why Home Alone isn't a Christmas movie either. I mean, I'm going to come right out and say they're both Christmas movies. Yeah, right. My, I have a Die Hard fucking Christmas ornament that yeah. I made. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> you don't sell them. <laughs> yeah, because nobody sells them. Because I'm just that artsy and craftsy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have to do that. Okay, we'll definitely do that. Coming up next week, Die Hard. There you go. Die Hard. And coming soon, a town hall. Very cool. Mm. And uh, that is this that movie show. Yes. That is that movie this show. This is that movie show. Thank that you. was. <laughs> that was <laughs> the Hebrew <laughs> hammer. Mike Went, Liam Stryker, Bill Neville is on assignment. You can follow us on all forms of social media at Mike Went, at Liam NAI. Hashtag that movie show. Of course, follow New Age Insiders Pop Network on all forms of your podcasting I, you fucked me up with that one. <laughs> I fucked myself you up with that one. You came in a little hot. I did. I came in hot. Basically, New Age Insiders pop on all podcasting apps, whether it's yeah. Spotify, Google, a- iTunes. Gork Normal. There you go. Stitcher. I love that we're you on, that from me. We're on <laughs> iHeart. We're on iHeart Radio. Are we really? We are on iHeart Radio. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, we're really fucking doing how, it, guys. How did they sneak that one by the censors? I applied. <laughs> I applied, and they gave it to us. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.